<laughs> Sorry. I had to be rejuvenated. I couldn't even think what the name of rejuvenated is. Reincarnated. I had to be reincarnated to enjoy this book. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorists. Sorry there wasn't one last week, but it took me an entire week to read this uh, sorry, uh, two entire weeks to read this 311 page book. I certainly thought I was going to be able to have it up by last week because I've been reading this book since the 1st of February. It is now the 12th or 13th of February. Can't remember can't remember what day it is. But uh, anyways, and I just got done with it tonight. Um, I'm literally doing the, the review and the Thursday theories for this book back to back. But today, we are not talking about Stephen King. We are talking about Tabitha King. Yeah, this is small world, y'all. Um, I'm doing this because it is, uh, by the way, happy Women in Horror Month to all you wonderful ladies in horror and to all you wonderful fans of female horror authors. Um, I figured I, I would take a de I would take a detour away from you know the dude side of the King family and finally tackle uh, the wife uh, Naomi. Naomi, their daughter, doesn't write. Uh, she's a minister, I believe, but uh, Tabitha does write. Unfortunately, I didn't care about this. But I didn't care for this book at all, but it was worth it for the connections. Now I'm gonna jump in here, and there's one. There's a loose thing in page 286 where Tabitha discusses alternate dimensions. So that's one thing, but I wanted to read that before we tie into the hard connect, um, what I think is the hard connect to the Stephen King universe and the Dark Tower. Um, he closed his eyes. There's spoilers for this book, by the way. And they're talking about how the, the camera or the minimizer works in this book. He closed his eyes with mirrors, he said, into other dimensions and back again. So you're able to travel in and out of dimensions. I can't explain it any better than that. So with that in mind, that certainly sounds like the doorways um, into Midworld and, you know, that aspect of things. But the big connection that I found, and peep this, it's going to blow y'all's minds. It blew mine. And I hope I'm not se overselling this, but I thought it was crazy. Hang on. Uh, page 64 and 65. So um, with page, uh, there it is. It starts right here. This is Roger talking to, I think it's Dolly, about how the device works. Um, and I want to, we'll go into afterward how it's a hard connect, but I'm sure as soon as I start reading, you guys will pick up on how it connects to the Stephen King universe and the Dark Tower. Well, when I was a kid, sorry, when I was a little kid, I used to think the world was run by buttons. I suppose I heard people talking about pushing the button and just figured if there was a button that could destroy the world, then there must be other buttons. Maybe even buttons that ran people. It's crazy, but I thought, but I really thought everything that happened happened because someone, somewhere, pushed a button. Some adult, I used to go around, some adult, I used to go around feeling under chair arms and things looking for the buttons. It really worried me. I didn't know how you were supposed to know which button did what. I was afraid I might accidentally hit one, maybe the button, and whoosh, there goes the world, down the hopper, or the one that would kill my mother. Now, I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and go down there and explode in the comment section about what I'm talking about while I, to oh, shoot, I kicked the camera, my bad, while I turn around here and I pull down this wonderful little book. All y'all know what I'm going for, I hope. Gwendy's Button Box, which ties into the Dark Tower because Randall Flagg is in it. Um, there's also some spoilers coming up for Gwendy's Button Box, so if you haven't read Gwendy's Button Box, you can uh, click away now. Randall Flagg's in it. There's a connection to Castle Rock. I've uh, connected Castle Rock before, all that good stuff. But there are buttons on this box that don't not only give Gwendy, the main character, coins, but they also kill people. There's uh, certain buttons that it's alluded to. It might be the end of the world um, if she pressed it. Now, if that's not a hard connect, I don't know what is. But there is, let's see here, 38 years between both of these books. Which makes me wonder exactly how long Gwendy's button box, in whatever format it was, 
was sitting around King's house or in a trunk or whatever before he passed it off to Richard Chismar. Um, it makes me wonder if these two things weren't written around the same time and one was put away and then stumbled upon many, many more decades, many decades later and he decided after a friend said, hey, we should work together sometime if he didn't pass along a little story that he got while either his wife or he was working on Small World. That is my huge connection, and I think it opens up a whole topic for discussion. Tell me, am I overreaching, or do you think that maybe this actually does connect the worlds of Tabitha King and Stephen King? Um, definitely Joe Hill has played around in his father's sandbox, and Stephen King has played around in Joe Hill's sandbox with his own characters. I'm looking forward to continuing on, even though I didn't like Small World, I'm looking forward to continuing on with Tabitha, the, Tabitha King's work to find out if I can find even more connections to the Stephen King universe. I hear tell there's even mention of Dick Holleran in one of Tabitha's novels. So, don't spoil anything, but if you would like to discuss all these crazy connections, please do so down there in the comments below, and I will hop in and join you guys. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been Thursday Theorist. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!